tough filled fruit jar and be gay -o. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. I'm a in the morning. 98.1 The Peak. Anthony Sosier. And why are you mad at me? Well, because uh, about a month and a half back when this whole thing happened with uh, you being mad at the city of Bangor and the mayor, da 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 da, -da. Over the t-shirt thing? Yeah, about the oh, t-shirt okay. thing, which I thought was totally justified, by the way. I thought it was a stupid idea, too. Yeah, it was. Idiot. <laughs> um, you also dumped on my mom, who uh -oh. writes for the Bangor Daily News. I can't believe I did that. And I wasn't too impressed uh -oh. with that. Uh-oh. And you see, the thing is, the thing is, I really liked you up until that point. Oh, well, wait a minute here. Now, I know what your mother... First of all, if I said something mean about your mother, I apologize. Okay. However, your mother did uh, write this article and never called me. What? She tried to call you. I was there while she tried to call you. I tried to call you, and neither of us could get through to you. I don't believe that, because anybody can get through to me. <laughs> Can't they? No. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, they can. The regular guy. Did, what, did you call? <laughs> you called the radio station? Uh, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the number that I was calling, but I know it's the number <laughs> to get in touch with you. And it wasn't working. We, was uh, this after the article was written or before it was written? This was before it was written, because I ended up doing some of the research for the article. It was, it was the information that I got was information that was off of your internet site. See, I don't have an internet site, so that would have been... It was, it was the MSNBC. Oh, the MSNBC uh, thing. Yeah, but they don't have the phone booth number. It's unauthorized. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, well, I'll take um, well, okay, I, I'll take responsibility if you're not being. But I can't imagine. I mean, I talk to people all the time who call the office, don't I? Well, of course I do. Well, I'm not here. I don't ever do that. Well, sometimes I do that. Maybe you two can get calls once in a while. Well, what did we say about your mother? Was it something horrible or? Uh, it was something to the effect that you called her incompetent. Oh well, yeah. Ooh. Well, I believed that at the time, but I, but, but. Uh, now you know. Yeah. Those are well, fighting words. I don't words. know. Well, no. Hey. I, I'd have to know what number he called because I, I, I can't believe that somebody who, a newspaper reporter calling me at the radio station wouldn't be able to get a hold of me. There's no controlling legal authority that suggests that <laughs> mistakes were made. It's just that simple. So what are you going to do, kid? <laughs> <laughs> You gonna take him out or what? <laughs> I got some large friends in the back that are gonna bust his kneecaps. Uh, I'm sorry I was mean to your mother, and and I'm also sorry uh, if you tried to call that I didn't uh, take your phone call. I, I, apolog I accept your apology. I apologize for both oh, of those things. Man, so. Well, what was I supposed to do? No, I mean I'm disappointed at the kid. He what, 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 you want to see somebody get beat, you call my mom a lesbian. I'm not, <laughs> so I mean, I'm not stupid either. No, oh, he's not stupid either. Uh, uh, well, tell your mom I'm sorry, and thank I you will. very much. I will. She's probably listening right now. So. Okay. All right, Anthony. Give Anthony a nice Anthony. hand. Yeah. Nice hand. It is uh, two minutes now until they are here on the uh, I Miss in the Morning program. 98.1. The Peak is WPEK, Seneca, Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson. For news, talk, and sports on FM. At 8.58, 46 degrees, I'm Chris Allen with Upstate News. Legislative leaders are working on plans to increase the amount of money the state provides for college tuition and fees. Lawmakers are considering whether the state can provide money to pay the cost for students with a B average. The plan could increase state grants to 10,000 to 12,000 students each year who don't get help now based on their academic work. The number of hungry people in the upstate is growing faster than the donations. According to the food bank officials, they say demand is up 15 to 20 percent this year. Compared to last year, donations about the same as last year. South Carolina's first black state Supreme Court justice will be honored by the South Carolina Bar this week. Jonathan Wright served on what was then a three-man state Supreme Court from 1870 to 1877. Back then, he was called the highest-ranking black man in America. He died in 1885. Attorney General Charlie Condon says the seizure of 500 pounds of marijuana and the indictment of 79 people will immediately reduce the amount of drugs on the streets. Officers in Greenville, Spartanburg, Pickens, Anderson, and Lawrence counties participated in the investigation that resulted in the seizure and the indictments. Greenville County Council... We uh, on Magic uh, 95.7. I'm Mr. Morning and Oldies... 
all day long. Yeah. 60s oldies, I think. Great. Mostly. I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't find it on the radio, so I don't even know where it was. I was just, I was, I was doing something else. I was just very busy. Yeah, right. I had a lot of things I was, things to address. Another here. brick on the load. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the people who brought us to uh, uh, Bangor are uh, McEachran and Hutchins. Mm -hmm. This uh, lumber deal. It's not a lumber yard, is it? What is it? Lumber yard. It's a what? A lumber yard. A lumber yard. Okay. All right. The, uh, like one person knows. <laughs> That's not a good indication. Is Maybe it? they should buy more ads. <laughs> the Bangor Daily News, Computer Renaissance, Miller's Discount. Prudential Singleton Real Estate, Bangor Chrysler Plymouth Dodge. You know what reminds me? That, that crook, uh, Steve Martinetti. What happened? From uh, the Jeep advertising people. They yeah. were supposed to get me. You know that new, uh, that little roadster that Plymouth is building? What do they call it? The, the um, Prowler. Yeah, the I was supposed Prowler. to get one of those in June. This is October, right? Yes, it certainly is. What the heck happened? I mean, I was going to pay for it, you know, oh, which would be refreshing. <laughs> and remarkable, you're right. And unprecedented. The, uh, the Bangor Savings Bank, uh, they were the first to offer... What? Well, you know, they, got a, a, they gave Deidre a nice little... Uh, oh, they came up with the, with the goodies. What yeah. else do we have here? for Something else for Deidre, right? What is it? Yeah. A lunchbox. <laughs> a, a, a big wheel. How nice. No, a uh, Tracy's... All natural balm and herbal products. Oh, okay. Well, she'll like that. So we'll, uh, we won't be able to, we'll send that back to the... We'll, we'll, we'll make Mark carry it. We'll make Mark carry it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, Van uh, Raymond Outfitters, Frontier Vision, and Harley the Plumber. Yeah. And, the, and they, then there's about 1,200 people here this morning, and they have... It's been catered by the H.P. Hood people. Mm -hmm. Now, also, the, um, and they've done a good job. Yeah, great job. And the radio station, I did, the radio station's done an outstanding job. I don't want to mm -hmm. bore you to death with all this, but I, it, I, I, well, it should be but I want to. Yeah. That they charged people to, to uh, you know, sit in the audience this morning. There's about 1,200 of them. Well, they sold the thing out in about an hour. And they uh, raised $6,000 for Camp uh, Capella, which is a camp for children with uh, cerebral palsy and other disabilities. So I thought it was a great that they did that, <laughs> rather than doing what I would have done, and that's kept the money. Sure. Rob found a, stu uh, a guy in the audience, not a stooge, uh, some guy in the audience who uh, has done something of note, and we're going to talk to him about it after Charles does the news. He said he played golf with Tiger Woods, which I, I don't know what that means, but... Well, he, it means he played golf with Tiger Woods. Yeah. You too? He didn't win. Who, the Tiger? <laughs> you played with him. What's your name, first of all? Mark Plummer. Ma Mark Plummer. Right. Right in front of you. Are you a, Do you people know him? Yeah. Oh, you do? Are, are, you a, you're, are, are you a golf pro in the area here? Or? Nope, in the amateur. Oh, you are? Yep. Okay. And uh, you played against Tiger Woods when? Uh, 1995 in the uh, U.S. Amateur semifinals. We did. Yeah. Obviously, that didn't work out. No. Well, I mean, don't take it out on him. Well, no, no, because I brought him up thinking that we could, you know, maybe hear more thrilling I'm in golf stories. <laughs> and what happens? Well, no, but I mean, the guy seemed like a normal guy. You're supposed to, you know, find freaks out here. Well, he told me he was going to do something freaky to you. I no, took him at his word. <laughs> That's a big fuzzy Zella fan. What I do thought. you do now, Mark? I uh, uh, run a manufacturing business down in Portland. We make uh, oil tanks and dumpsters. Oh, you do? See? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, is that not geeky? Come on, it's oil tanks. <laughs> you can't run with that? Come on! <laughs> and you obviously still play golf? Yes. Okay. And you, uh, you break pars? Occasionally. Oh, you do? So you don't even have a handicap, right? Uh, yeah, plus one. Okay, well, that's, can't do much better than that, can you? No, you can't. No. It's, it's a tap-in one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, why, why didn't you just wait till tomorrow? We're going to be in Portland tomorrow. I couldn't get tickets tomorrow. So you drove all the way here today. Right. You really are a loser. <laughs> Despite your handicap. Yeah. I mean, you drove... How far is it from Portland? 
I live in Augusta. I live halfway in between. Well, where the hell are you from? <laughs> <laughs> and how do you golf in the snow? <laughs> well, do you own this company? No. Oh, you don't? No. You just work for them? Right. Okay. Are you married? Yes. How many kids? Yep, two stepchildren. Well, I don't know. What, do we want to refer to them as stepchildren? Or? What? They are. Okay. Get into that. <laughs> it's I got two kids I really don't love. <laughs> I don't think that's what. <laughs> they're not mine. Well, they're not mine. I, uh... Hello, community college. <laughs> <laughs> See the one with the big ears? Not mine. <laughs> Eyes a little too close together. Not, not my kid. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little fat girl. Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> your wife had two children when you got married, right? You got it. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, you, but you guys haven't had any. No, we haven't. No. Are you? What do you want to have any? Uh, no, we're not going to. No. Why not? No. Are you having sex with her? <laughs> uh, Occasionally. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, that unnecessary. No, no, no I mean, no. <laughs> unnecessary. No, Bernard. No, that's unnecessary. Just, no, it's uh, bad Bernard. <laughs> Shame down. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, I wish we had time to play golf today, but it's probably too cold, right? No, we're playing this afternoon. Oh, we yeah. Need, we need a fourth. If oh, you, you do. Uh, if you got time. Where are you playing? In Portland? Oh, down in Augusta. Augusta. Right on your way to Portland. Oh, it is? Yeah. But well, we're going to fly to Portland from here, though. Well, still on your way. <laughs> get out. <laughs> get a parachute. <laughs> Guess we could get them to land there in Augusta, right? Yeah, sure. The I man. How far is Augusta from Portland? Uh, about an hour. We're not going to be playing today. No. So. Now, you know, I enjoyed uh, two weeks of golf. And now I auctioned the clubs off, and a guy bought them for $10,000. He's... Uh, uh, we're just waiting for you. I sold my golf boots for $3,000 to my next-door neighbor in Connecticut. And um, I sold a golf club for $10,000, going to the Tomorrow's Children's Fund and the CJ Foundation for Sudden Oops. Infant Death Syndrome. So I have no clubs now, and I'm not going to buy any more. So. I like a lend you set. But it's... Um, you admitted you sort of enjoyed hitting the golf ball. Even as recently Yeah, but as I, I just don't want to go out and have to walk around any place to talk to people. Well, I just wonder. <laughs> Talk about it. Mark, you've been a very good sport. Was it Mark, right? Yes. Okay. I'm so wrapped up in myself, I can't remember anybody else's name. Mark Plummer. <laughs> Mark Plummer. <laughs> I'm surprised I remember that kid's name, really. So. Uh, well, you've been, uh, you know, get off the stage. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. <laughs> it's coming up on a quarter after the hour here on the um, I Miss in the Morning program. All right, Charles has a little news. We'll do that, and then uh, we'll talk to some more folks. All right. And uh, Richard Nixon. I know you all been waiting all morning for him, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> and Billy Bob, you've been waiting all morning for him, haven't, haven't you? you? <laughs> They'll both be here, but Chuck has little news. Good morning, Charles. Morning, I man. The headline in this morning's New York Daily News: Reno to Microsoft bite this. B Y T E. The Attorney General wants to find the commuter giant a million bucks a day for allegedly trying to monopolize access to the Internet in violation of a 1995 court order that barred Microsoft from engaging in anti-competitive licensing practices. Today's petition with the court alleges that Microsoft violated the 1995 order by requiring PC manufacturers to license and distribute Microsoft's Internet browser called Internet... Microsoft spokesman Mark Murray says the company will prevail in court. We are uh, confident that the facts will show that Microsoft is in full compliance with the consent decree. We're competing vigorously, but we're competing legally, and our efforts are benefiting consumers in the form of greater innovation, better and better products, lower and lower prices. Microsoft says it has done nothing wrong, calls the Justice Department action misguided. Justice Department calls this lawsuit a waste of time. Apollo Media, which allows users to send anonymous email featuring profanity and nude pictures to government officials, claims the Communications Decency Act violates the right to free speech. What? And specifically denies adults their God-given right to express themselves with intent to annoy. Sounds like a hallmark 
of this radio program. The decency law makes it a felony to send anything over the Internet that's considered lewd, lascivious, filthy, or indecent. The Justice Department says it has no interest in going after the company. Uh, final Internet-related news item, America Online has filed a lawsuit in federal court in Virginia accusing another company of scamming, sending millions of unsolicited email messages to a AOL customers. It's a second such lawsuit by America Online against a mass emailer. AOL is also suing a Las Vegas company, which sent out junk email ads proponing an ethnic online stripping service. White House aides say they cannot explain their failure to produce this letter from a retired investment banker, which would provide proof that the president made at least one fundraising telephone call from the White House. 1994 letter from Richard Jenrette informing the president that he, Jenrette, was contributing $50,000 at your request, meaning Mr. Clinton's. Well, why didn't the White House turn over the letter in response to a subpoena? Yeah. White House Press Secretary Mike McCurry said, I can't answer that. That's his quote. The spokesman for the Senate Governmental Affairs Committee says the letter is an indication that the White House is still not supplying us with information subpoenaed months ago. Maybe it just fell out of Clinton's pants when they were down around his ankles or that something. That will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> just I think we just need to... Maybe they're upstairs yeah. there in the yeah. somewhere. We could speculate all yeah, day. We could right. just, yeah. Paul Clark added, though, it makes you wonder if there are more <laughs> out there that we will never get. White House Damage Control Specialist Lanny Davis, when questioned about the letter, said... The White House aides, quote, cannot yet locate it. Imus on the Road is sponsored by Mohegan Sun, a casino unlike anything you have ever imagined. And Speed Vision, which is, a <coughs> excuse me, the first 24-hour cable network devoted to cars, boats, planes, and motorcycles. You know about that? I love it. You get the uh, Neat. Speed Vision situation by calling 1-888-22-SPEED. Okay. It is uh, 18 after the hour. Rob has found someone else who we will uh, chat, chat with. Yeah. Victimize. Uh, yeah, victimize. Har harass, har harass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coming up here in a minute, plus Billy Bob and uh, Richard Nixon. We're live in Bangor, uh, Maine. Yeah. We're talking with uh, John Kennedy, who's co-founder, editor-in-chief of uh, George Magazine. Well, so what are we talking about? No tabloid around. journalism? Yeah, tabloid journalism. Well, how do you? I mean, is, is there a day goes by that somebody's not taking your photograph? Yeah, today. You generally treat it pretty well, don't you think, or do you? I mean, you yeah, personally? I have no complaints. I mean, I've I've had my knocks. I've I had a uh, I had a couple of uh, I mean, losing me, me, rounds with the bar exam, and I took my knocks. I mean, when people made fun of you for not passing the bar. Yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. And everybody's asking if you're going to run for office, and I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't. Right. Is it ever in your mind? Or uh, I, I think you really have to have an animating idea to run for office more than anything. Otherwise. Yeah, but I mean, think, how great is this? A Kennedy running for office. Think how much fun you'd have. Not, ha not having to address a scandal. I mean. <laughs> well, there's time. <laughs> 98.1 The Peak. WPEK. Your home is your castle, and decorating it should be a royal affair. The furnishings, colors, textures, even the smallest accessories you choose. <laughs> We are talking community standards. Would you like it if a sexually explicit shop moved in right next to you? What would you do? How would you stand your ground? How would you fight the zoning commission? Or would you even care? Better yet, when your kids walked home from school every day and they had to walk by one of these places, what would you say to them? How would you handle it? We're asking the simplest question of all. There's an adult bookstore, adult video store that's being built in Union City. We're asking, how did it happen? How has our culture declined, or is there someone out there who'll say it hasn't declined? In fact, it's just evolving. And we'll talk about all morning long why exhibitionism's on the increase, why voyeurism's on the increase, why all kinds of the paraphilias and the fetishes, why they're all on the increase. We'll explain it clearly in stentorian English before the morning is over, and you'll go, wow, I never thought of that. I'll be taking your calls until 11.30 this morning. To the phones, 404-367-WGST, Wayne and Ackworth, good morning. Hey, Doc, how's it going? You know, it's a difficult topic, but it's one that we talk about. Thank you very much, Wayne. Carry well, I'll on. Be, I'll be honest with you, you know, you talk about it being a difficult topic, but the fact of the matter is, is you're right. Uh, these videos are selling hand over fist, and obviously it seems to be a quite a big growing uh, industry. But, but the meaning in Spanish is a very derogative uh, meaning. Well, don't you think a cojones sounds a little Hawaiian? 
Well, maybe. You know, like Kamehameha and, you know, and Hula and stuff like that? Yeah, it could be like Kahuna. Oh, Kahuna. Yeah, the big Kahuna. And Kahunas, Kahuna, yeah. That's why I thought it was Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, it, that and, uh, it took real cojones to for... Well, look at, look at Stewart Avenue. How many years have we put up with that? Oh, my. You know, and, and Stewart Avenue at one time was a, was a nice little, uh, you know, road, and it had homes, and people lived there and everything else. When they have memory serves, they're changing the name of Stewart Avenue, right? Oh, yeah, and that's going to cure all the ills, aren't it? Well, you know, I will, <laughs> you know there, there is one point we can make that Times Square, when I used to work in Manhattan... Amino nutrient being floated today by Bill Archer. He is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, a Republican from Texas. Okay? And uh, he's going to introduce some IRS reform. Bubbles on sale. Get a big fit at a great price. <laughs> well, you know, he might have a couple coming up in uh, Metuchen, New Jersey, or Sayerville, New Jersey, actually. We could give you more delays on that in the next minute. Um, this report's brought to you by your... Oh, baby, it's time now for Hymus in the Morning 2020 Sports. Here's Mark Breen. <laughs> it's over for the Bulls dynasty. Good morning. Mike Braid with Sports. Chicago Bulls have been the NBA's best in recent years, but their championship team is now crumbling. The latest, Michael Jordan undergoing career-ending foot surgery yesterday. Jordan had ingrown toenails removed from both feet, and it's unlikely he'll ever play again. <laughs> Jordan himself said he wouldn't put his worst enemy through this type of operation. It was the most humiliating ordeal of my life, one that no person should ever have to suffer. Jordan's toes will be placed in a cast for the next six months, then the rehab process will begin. One medical expert I spoke to this morning told me double ingrown toenail surgery is career-ending as far as basketball is concerned. You so really the great are. Michael Jordan is done. Just an idiot. <laughs> Neil O'Donnell's status as starting Jet quarterback may not be over yet. O'Donnell pulled from Sunday's Jet game for Glenn Foley, who then led the team to victory. But O'Donnell's played well this season, and Bill Parcells, the head coach, has not yet made a decision. Parcells yesterday was asked if Foley deserves to be the starter as a reward for his performance. You talk about guys stepping I'm not. Up. Look at this isn't, it, we're, this isn't jeopardy here. <laughs> you know, we're not handing, the guy you know, we're not handing out guy. prizes at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible attitude. Holy <laughs> the coach is supposed to be on with oh, us. Uh, oh, man. Uh, this coming Monday. Yeah. Great. Well, he's and, almost. Uh, just as we tried to irritate Tom Brokaw this morning and succeeded, by the way. Although Brokaw didn't lose his temper. Right. There's the only problem with the coach. The coach actually likes me, so that may be a problem. But That could change in Ari. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> Parcells almost has two weeks to decide. Jets are off this week. Parcells was asked when he will announce his decision. Don't, don't put me on a timetable yet. I'm not just ready to answer today. This isn't going to be, a, this isn't going to be something that drags out forever here. I just want to, you, you mind if I talk to my coaches a little bit? <laughs> no, God, no, we don't. Can he just answer a question? Mike, yes. you know what I want you to do? What? I want you to save all of those cuts for me. You got okay. it. Going back to the cut, uh, going back to the FTD floors cut, <laughs> right. and then these two cuts, whatever, any other cuts you have of uh, Tubbo uh, losing it here with these reporters <laughs> so that I can play them for him yeah. next week. And then we'll just get, you know, his comments about, you know, it's actually a pretty good show. I mean, I realize this is just stupid. Rambling with gambling? No. Uh, the Phil Simms, uh, Bill Parcells pregame show that they show in New York. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Terrific. Yeah, because Sims used to play for him, and Sims realizes what a whack job Parcells is. <laughs> is able to handle him. But, right. but at the same time, he's still a little bit scared of him. You can see that, can't you? Absolutely. It's much yeah. like McCord in the Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Anyway, go ahead, Mike. The Monday Night Football, Colts and Bills played last night, but because it was such a horrible game, the final result will not be reported, as uh, told by the NFL offices. Did Larry escape? Where is Larry? <laughs> <laughs> He's out there trying to find more nuts. Oh, okay. 
All right, Mike. Thanks a lot. Thank you, I man. <laughs> well, so long, everybody. It's 28 after the hour here in the I'm Your Morning program. Rob has found a woman in the audience whose name is Melissa Rockwood. Melissa Rockwood. Rockwood. Mm -hmm. How you doing, baby? Good, thanks. Bye, 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 bye. What's up with you? Um, I told Rob that my boss asked me to take an I'm a addict sticker off the wall in my office. What? Um, my husband had one of these little oval Imus attic stickers. That right. You've seen them. Here. Isn't that redundant? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Melissa. Don't pay any attention to the bald-headed stooge sitting behind me. And it, it had been up for a couple of months, and she just happened to notice it one day and said that it had to come down. You have a woman boss. Yes, I do. That's the problem there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. What do you do? I took it down because it left me totally speechless. No, I mean, what do you do for, what kind of job do you have? Um, I work as an administrative assistant in the public information office at the Jackson Lab in Bar Harbor. Is there something wrong with that? It's, like a, <laughs> it's a cloning it's deal. Is it what? It's one of those cloning deals. It is? It'd what? be nice if I could be cloned. <laughs> what is the Jackson Lab? They do um, basic genetics research. Oh, it is a cloning. So it is a cloning lab. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so your boss, I guess, not a fan, right? No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. So clearly, just uh, some disgruntled lesbian, some frigid skank, <laughs> frigid skank. And I don't think that's necessary. Where are you working tomorrow, Melissa? Yeah, how can, how can that help, Melissa? Uh, uh, so you took it down. I took it down. How are you able to be here today? A day off or something? She's you, sick. You, <laughs> it's a vacation day. It is? Yes, it is. You took a vacation day to be here. I did. I don't get that. I mean, well, it's very nice. And, well, it's just I earned a vacation day to come. Yeah. yeah. Has this been fun for you? Or? Yes, definitely. What oh, has? Yes. So you've enjoyed it and all that? Very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Did Rob uh, put a move on you out in the audience? <laughs> no. no, he didn't. No. Good. I'm glad to hear that. We gonna do the rest of the day. Go outside and watch traffic. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll get into traffic and head back down towards Ellsworth and Bar Harbor. Well, uh, so Major take down the IMS attic sticker. Mm -hmm. I, mean, it's I didn't throw it out though. I do have it in case I. Go. Oh, well, thank God. So. Yeah. And now I have another one, so I can put up two. Right. So, let me talk to Rob a moment. Where do you get these people? <laughs> it was like this big sexual harassment deal. It was obviously about this. It really wasn't about the sticker. This is obvious. Oh. You know, to me, it's like the boss was trying to put the moves on Melissa and made her take down the sticker. I that's don't kind of like, you know, an entree, you know what I'm saying? Like it's Melissa Ooh, Etheridge? Is that I sticker so. sticky? Oh, ah. Uh, I'm a little sticky myself, you know, that kind of thing. No, no, no. Gary, no, no, no. Gary, no. No, why are we... Actually, stay with me, please, my life's out! Actually, I have something even better. She asked me, she thought I was a feminist. And why do I listen to the Amish show if I'm a feminist? And Ooh, well, that's... Oh, I didn't realize that two terms were mutually exclusive. I didn't know that we were, that, that people... Had, you know, had the impression that this program was anti... Um, dingbat. Yeah. <laughs> We're all full of the dingbats. <laughs> I don't think we conduct... I don't understand that. No, I don't either. either. We're, yeah, we're not, no. it's not a sexist program. How'd she get that impression? Well, we don't have women... We don't encourage women to take their clothes off or... No. We actually talk to women about books they write. Yeah. Probably just well, they say they write. Don't spank them. Like... Doris Kearns Goodwin, I mean, no. I guess she writes those books. I would like to thank Doris, but... Well, Melissa, I'm sorry, uh, I'm just, you know, this is not this is going to have any effect on your job, is it? You're appearing on a program, or...? I hope not. No, of course not. I have a big lawsuit. No, I came to the program with the manager of human resources, so... Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. So who's running the lab? <laughs> Look at all these clone monkeys running around there going nuts. <laughs> Genetic research. Yes, basic genetics research. Not on humans at all. Oh. It's very basic. Using like, mouse models. Using mice? Yes. 
no models, the little plastic things <laughs> coming together. They're killing the little mice? No. They're not killing them? No. They're just growing heads and stuff on them. <laughs> you have mice also... with like two little peaties and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> no. And they're also very well known for training and education of scientists. Oh, okay. Oh, so. oh. And you, you're an administrative assistant? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's good. It's good that you can say it. <laughs> Dying. <laughs> well, uh, Melissa, I'm sorry this, uh, you know, didn't work either on my part or yours, but I mean, we... <laughs> We're working on it. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, I know, so. She gave me money. <laughs> well, I know, but I mean... <laughs> give me a hundred dollars, give me a bus station behind me. You brought up, you, br you bring up two normal people. I wrote a well, check, you... but it hasn't cleared yet. No. <laughs> it is uh, <clears throat> 34 minutes past the hour. Well, before the brakes just completely, the wheels just completely. Mel Melissa, on, on a serious note, get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Melissa. Yeah. Rockwood. 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 Okay. Ready? Bring him. Please help me, I'm falling in love with you. Close the door to temptation. Don't let me walk through. Turn away from me, darling. Would you like to be able to read the morning newspaper in 10 minutes or polish off a novel on your lunch break or read all about your new computer in one evening think about that because when you go through the new reading genius home study course you'll read so much faster you'll be astounded at how quickly you get to the last page the reading genius home study course is easy it's systematic it takes just a few short hours and anybody can do it you'll read 200 percent faster than you do right now with better us attorney general charlie condon saying the investigation involved law enforcement officers from greenville spartanburg pickens anderson also lawrence counties from North Carolina comes word, Governor... No, don't have a car wreck. Why would I lash out at... I don't know. What did she say? I couldn't... Oh, you did? Oh, that's yeah. great. Huh. Why didn't you bring her up, Rob? Now, I was holding out for some guy to bring up some lobsters. It's 20 minutes to the hour here on the Irish Morning Program, and now, out of the Nervous Hospital, here live in uh, Bangor, Maine with us, y'all please welcome... Uh, Billy Bob. Good morning, Billy Bob. I reckon you want to know what I think about this main deal. No, we don't. All right. <laughs> no, no, we, no do. we do. We do. We do. Some people call it down east. I call it Maine. Well, I reckon it's okay, I guess. Seems to me like it ain't all that much different from Arkansas. <laughs> Except in Maine, they got crawdaddies so big, you need a nutcracker to eat them. <laughs> And it looked to me like folks up here got fewer teeth. <laughs> I hear tell that back in the 1800s, Bangor was known as the lumber capital of the world. Now they call it the Queen City. You know, that's a good plan, uh, Carl. Just wait until they laugh. If the <laughs> bastards don't laugh, wait all night. I mean, I wait all day. It doesn't make any difference. We could be here at fair base. <laughs> we, we, we. <laughs> We could be here until it's time to go on in Portland. So. We could be here until next month. <laughs> right ahead. I thought you'd tell them a laugh at this when we did it again. I, I explained to all of you, I don't care that you've heard it before. There are millions of people around the country who haven't heard it. Can you play along? How hard is it? <laughs> go ahead. Some people call it banger. I call it the Queen City. <laughs> I'm going to kill these people with a sling blade. <laughs> Don't know why they call it the Queen City, because I've seen a bunch of guys downtown with short haircuts and plaid flannel shirts. They must have been a lumberjacks. Because <laughs> they told me they was packing some serious wood. 
<laughs> even offered to show me their logs. <laughs> Lumberjacks must be a lot popular here because they got a statue of a real famous one downtown, Paul Bunyan. Yeah. Pretty big fella, about 25 foot or so. That wasn't one of the funny lines, you moron. <laughs> People I'm, as crazy as you are. I'm the one in the nervous hospital. <laughs> Looks like he packed a bit of wood in his day. Must have been real proud of it, too, because he got this big old smile on his face. Anyway, this lady told me this Bunyan fella was an animal lover. Had him a big blue ox he called Babe. Mm. I guess that's another reason why Maine sort of reminds me of Arkansas. Not cause we got that many lumberjacks, but I know plenty of fellers back home who pack wood, like the president. <laughs> <laughs> and even more what's animal lovers. Cause although we don't have no oxen in Arkansas, yeah. I've heard a man from time to time call a sheep or a goat. Babe. <laughs> Billy Bob here on the Hi, Mr. Sunday morning program. It is uh, 17 minutes uh, until they are. Mike Francesa. Good morning, Mr. Francesa. Good morning, Don. How are you? Well, I'm all right. Good. Where are you going? Where are you going tomorrow? Nova Scotia? <laughs> no, we're going to Bangor, Maine. Where are we going? No Maine. Up to Portland, Maine, Nova Scotia, maybe Newfoundland before we make the big trek home. <laughs> big whaling country up there. <laughs> That's why you stay away. You walk right into that, didn't you? I Mikey. did walk right into that. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny uh, in the morning, you're listening to Amos in the morning. In the post-game press conference, somebody asked Coach Parcells who he was going to start as his quarterback next week because he pulled Neil O'Donnell at halftime. Uh, are you going to be able to get the coach in here a week from today? We're working on it, Don, yeah. That's the first question I'm going to ask him. Is what? Is First of all, are you trying to send a message to the league? Right. And secondly, <laughs> who's going to be the starting quarterback? <laughs> oh, I think those are the first two, absolutely. <laughs> and then we lock the door and we let him beat the hell out of you. <laughs> 98.1 The Peak. W-P-E-K. Good Tuesday morning to you. This is Chris Allen wanting to tell you about MindSpring, the national Internet service that is the one you want to get. It seems pretty obvious to me. In fact, PC World says that this is a best buy. And they're waiving their startup fee through the end of this month, too, so it's a great time to purchase. It's 1-888-MSPRING. I'll start with a phone number. It's toll-free, so you can get started there. 1-888-MSPRING. The good thing about it is when you go on to a connection... You are direct onto the Internet automatically. None of the waiting, none of the ads, none of the artwork. will fix your pains. Glass Doctor, serving you from seven convenient locations. Look for Glass Doctor in the yellow pages. Call the Glass Doctor, he'll fix your pains. Call the Glass Doctor. Call Glass Doctor. He'll f*** you show. I'm he, talking about he, Keith. I, I know him. I like him. He's, okay. a, he's, a, he's a terrific guy. He's very funny. Yeah. He's all of the things that you said. Okay, we're, talk, we're talking about Keith Olbermann, who, the, who was a funny guy in Sports Center on ESPN. Y'all probably know that. Okay. He left there, and now he's on MSNBC, and he does a, a program called The Big Show at 8 o'clock Eastern and Pacific Time. And Barnacle was uh, on his uh, debut show with one of Barnacle's favorite people, Naomi Wolf, the... One of the single dumbest people in the planet. <laughs> she has a book out. She wrote the book with a trowel. I'm telling you. <laughs> the book is unbelievable. I mean, she's one of the, She's one of the, She's not even a feminist. She's so bizarre. She's beyond feminism. You say, "Hi, how are you? It's a cloudy day today." She says, "That's because you have a penis." <laughs> unbelievable. Larry, how are you? How are things in the men's room? <laughs> you know, it's nice to see Larry Kenny here, but I was really surprised when, when I saw that Rosie O'Donnell came with <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, another visual joke here on the Irish Money Radio Program. It's 25 minutes till the hour, and we're in Portland, Maine, at the Merrill Auditorium. Being abused by um, Mike Barnacle, Savage. who's a, uh, the premier columnist for the Boston Globe, also uh, appears on a news hour with Jim Lehrer as a regional editor. How did that come about, by the way? 
I think PBS was intent on proving that they had a sense of humor, you know, and so they asked me to uh, come on to show that, uh, you know, they weren't ponderous all the time. You know, no. they could have dumb people on PBS, and as proof of that, they go to me. Like once or twice a week, they have uh, Mr. Barnacle on, and then they have uh, Patrick McGuigan, I kind of like, from Oklahoma. Yeah. They have... Uh, Cynthia Tucker from Atlanta. Yeah, I kind of like her. Lee Collum from Dallas. Oh, man, I'm telling you. What? It's just over for What's Lee Collum, isn't it? Lee? <laughs> very, very nice person. I'm sure she is, yeah. but she really looks like she's had a lot of facial surgery. <laughs> Doesn't she? <laughs> and then they have... How would we know that? Well, I just... Are you familiar with facial <laughs> surgery? <laughs> if not, you ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> if I was, I wouldn't look like this. Um... <laughs> Jesus, I saw just, what do we, we saw a picture of, just from the nose up of somebody in a paper yesterday, and it was it Keith Richards or Mick Jagger? Jagger. Jagger. One of them. And I looked exactly like me, and I was, <clears throat> that's frightening. Keith Richards. <laughs> yeah, Keith yeah, Richards. Yeah. Yeah. You, look like, you look a lot alike from the um, waist down, too. So <laughs> when you wear those spandex things at the hotel, I noticed that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And thought it would be a good idea to bring it up now. <laughs> thought it might be amusing. Yeah, thought it might be funny. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> and uh, then there's a guy from, where's the bow tie from San Diego? And they ask you questions about, it's like we do, we ask you uh, how you feel about various issues. And I've, uh, and I, I've made some notes here. And so I thought I'd ask you about some of these issues. This there's not tens of millions of people watching the news hour, hello, with Jim Lair. By the way, putting Barnacle on McNeil Lair is like Courtney Love singing with the three tenors. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the white trash in here. <laughs> but I mean, you know. Uh, now we, we got a, uh, Bernard got a tip. This is legitimate. Bernard got a tip from somebody at one of the networks. He won't reveal who it was, and I don't require him to, because I trust Bernard when he gives me a story. Especially when he's dealing with Laura. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, the complaint that Paula Corbin Jones lodged contained the allegation regarding the president's, uh, the, this distinguishing characteristic involved in his genital area, that it, what it amounted to, she didn't charge us, but what it amounted to was something we learned that can best be described as Peyronie's disease. So here is my question. Had, you, had, had anybody at your newspaper, or had you heard, because if, if Bernard finds this out, you would think that. Had any of you folks heard that? Has your paper reported it? Is it something that, that you would report? Uh, the paper has not reported it. Uh, I am not aware that anyone had heard of it uh, prior to that. I, I think that particular field of expertise is one of Bernard's specialties. <laughs> <laughs> It's Mike's liberal bias showing again. That's what offend his, you, his boy Billy. You leave uh, Barnacle alone. So, uh, sure, well, attack Robin, the Iron Man. How about Fatso in the White House? <laughs> it Bernie was. is up here. Bernie thinks OUI is French for yes. <laughs> 21 to the hour here in the Amazon program. So, uh, uh, well, the Washington Times, of course. And the New York Post. The, yeah, the Washington Times is one of the few papers in America where, where even the weather report is suspect. <laughs> but, but I mean, I know, I know all of these people in these major news organizations, the, the Tim Russers, the Brokaws, Rathers, all the... You're kidding, the, you know those guys? Well, no, well, I'm not friends with them, as you are, but I mean, or Greenfield, those people. Mm -hmm. So they all were aware of this story. So I, I wonder, uh, why has no one, why hasn't it been reached the legitimate press yet? And this is something that... You know, I think, actually, part of it is that because it's so embarrassing, I think a lot of us, not only, you know, who work for newspapers and TV stations, but people in this hall to today, I mean, you kind of want a president that you can be proud of, and the idea of reporting on distinguishing characteristics of the presidential penis is really rather demeaning to both us and the country. So we tend to shy away from saying, you know, hey, have we got that penis story on page one tomorrow? I, I mean, look at it. I mean, It'd be great the, if we had the penis on page one. Yeah, well... <laughs> then you, that would be a story, you, yeah. You do almost every day, but he's dressed in a suit. <laughs> <laughs>
Are you happy now, Bernard? The whole thing, the whole thing is, uh, is disturbing. I mean, you have a president of the United States presiding over an administration that, in my view, I think is the single most cynical administration since Richard Nixon left office. Now, wait, wait just a moment there. Let's, there's no need to drag dead people into this, okay? <laughs> well, you want the, did, you, uh, did you think that she should be able to uh, litigate this suit while he's in office? No. Oh, you didn't. <clears throat> now, I don't want to see the president of the yeah. United States on the stand or, uh, you know, being deposed and, uh, you know, Polaroid snapshots taken lineup, of his... Yeah. I, I don't want to see that. Yeah, I, don't the, I mean, no matter what you think of him personally or politically, he's the president. And I want my children to be able to listen and watch the news without having to shut it off when stories about the president comes on because we're talking about, you know, his body parts. I don't want my 11-year-old son or 12-year-old son saying, hey, hey, Dad, what's the story on, you know, the president's penis? No. I, 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 don't, I don't want that. I thought it was remarkable that Bob Bennett actually went on Face the Nation and did address that issue about that there were no, that it wasn't, probably, the president probably could have done without this, Bob Bennett saying, you know, it, it, it wasn't large, it wasn't, uh, you don't want anybody to say that, do you? No, you no. don't. You don't want to say, you know, you have a little cocktail frank there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, on a serious note, I mean, I just, it, made, it even made me, and we revel, as you know, in the agony of everyone, but, and, and think most things are humorous, but it's, it, it isn't. Uh, no, it's know. not good. It's I mean, it good. is not good. I mean, and it, it, it's not good what's been going on for six or seven years. I mean, I mean there's been a constant evasion from the truth at, at every level when you come to this particular president. I mean, they are, they, are un, they are incapable, they seemingly are incapable of providing the most basic truths that, uh, the, the tapes are a perfect example. I mean, oh, someone spelled coffee wrong on the computer, yeah. or we tried to get a hold of them, but it was, uh, you know, a Jewish holiday. I mean, it's just preposterous stuff that no one believes that they continue to put out each, I, I have actually been thinking about this. We, we're here in Maine today. Maine had a great United States Senator, Ed Muskie, who was in office for years. And if you think back, if you think back to, to politics, when, when Muskie first began in office, you had people like uh, Carl Hayden from Arizona, where you were born, who became a United States Senator after he was Sheriff of Maricopa County. You had, you had Phil Hart in, in Michigan. You had Paul Douglas in Illinois. You had Javits in New York. Uh, are you we had, going to name every you, senator? You, you, had, you, had, you had giants. You had Make giants who were in politics yeah. and, 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 and were a part of politics and would, would do their thing in politics based upon what they felt was best for the country because their experience was coming through a depression, perhaps fighting World War II or at least serving in World War II. Today, you look at the United States Senate, you look at the President of the United States, instead of politics being about the country, everything is about them, personally. It's all ego today. It's all, you know, how best can I get reelected? You had, you, you, I, I drove up here, I drove up here on an interstate, you know, it, it took me an hour and 15 minutes. It's part of a highway system put in by Dwight D. Eisenhower, one of the great federal programs of all time, because people thought ahead in those days. They thought about, you know, what's this country going to need in 15 to 20 years? Today, these people can't see beyond the next election. That's all they think about. That's, they, they, I mean, they're, they're, obsumed, they're consumed with the next election. You know, they, they spend half the day raising money to get reelected. Not for us, not to help us. How's your national health insurance program doing, folks? You got universal health insurance? <laughs> Any of you worried about getting to be 70 years of age and being broke? Well, you all look like you're about 70 now. <laughs> and if you're living here, you must be broke. But, uh, you, you know, I mean, these things, you know, they're not doing anything. They, they don't do things. They don't do the kinds of things that people need done. They, they are only interested in, you know, talking to pollsters, getting reelected, and that's it. But, the, but, but uh, one of the things, I was talking to Brokaw the other day, one of the things that I find startling is that no one cares about all of this. We were talking about whether there's ever going to be any campaign finance reform, which I don't think anybody in Congress wants, by the way. Even, I mean, I, I, I think maybe Senator McCain sort of does, but I, I mean, I take him at his word, wouldn't I yeah. guess. But there's not ever going to be any campaign, fin meaningful campaign finance reform. And, and no one cares about, for you talk, talking about these tapes, for example, there's a, couple, there's a couple examples and incidents involving these tapes 
where, where there's the, the sort of potential of criminality that went on with the Watergate tapes. It's not an exaggeration, but nobody cares. Well, I don't believe that people don't care. I think people do care at a certain level, but because, uh, you know, President Clinton, who's a wonderful guy personally, be, because he happens to serve in office at a time when the economy is just incredible, and people have bought the new Ford Explorer and are putting the addition onto the family room. Jeep. And, Jeep. You know, they're not, they, they're not thinking. Bought the new Jeep. They bought the new, they bought the new Jeep, Jeep that you don't have, that you're, getting, <laughs> that you're trying to scam for free. But, I mean, they're not, they're not thinking yeah. uh, at, a, at a conscious level about campaign finance reform. I mean, campaign finance reform, what they ought to do with campaign finance reform is tell them, you can raise as much money as you want from whomever you want to raise it. We don't care. Go out and raise it. But, but. You cannot hire a pollster. You cannot hire a speechwriter. Oh, I like you cannot idea. go on TV with paid commercials prepared by David Garth or uh, your Bob Squires. If you want to go on TV, you can go on for an hour, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, but you've got to be there yourself. You've got to stand up yourself, no speechwriter, and do it. I mean, what would FDR have done, you know, if he would... I mean, Clinton relies... Clinton doesn't go to they the bathroom. They wouldn't have stood up. That would have been well, one thing. <laughs> he, he might have been, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, there's nothing. Clinton, I I'd point that out. Clinton is completely poll driven. Completely poll driven. No, I did not. You didn't. I'm no, very didn't. surprised. No. Couldn't you see Barnacle out there <laughs> high fiving somebody <laughs> when they. Yeah. yeah. Brown sugar. <laughs> they start me up and you're doing that. Woo! Kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> high five, sympathy for the devil. Uh, we'll talk more with Mike Barnacle uh, coming up. Also, uh, Why Mr. White Boy Pig Feast to Preach here this morning with the, uh, coincidentally, Bubba made a boo boo blues. <laughs> and uh, have you talked to any of these people who are here? Not yet, sir. Because we did want to take a couple of... Looks like there's a lot of fairly young people here, which I find curious. Do you want me to skew that way? Well, no, I'm not, not, you know, not like, not, not like a 14-year-old, but, you know. Just want to know what you want me to do. No. Go out and barter a rooster for talk. <laughs> and that's what you can do quite easily. Well, we, you know, we did this yesterday, and it was, uh, you know, we had the one guy who... Yesterday was good. It was unfortunate, <laughs> the two people we picked yesterday. And they were the two most interesting in the crowd. I, I just can't believe that. All right, 12 minutes till the hour, and uh, we're at the Merrill Auditorium in Portland, Maine, on Hot Talk 970 WCAM. <laughs> Everybody always picking on me. I miss in the morning. 98.1 The Peak. Tickets for a Greenville Growl prize package coming up. Not tickets, but a Greenville Growl prize package coming up. And tickets to the Parade of Homes momentarily. All right, we're in Portland, Maine. That's the uh, Marijuana Time. Yeah. Big sale going on at the Autobot Express that I need to tell you about. These flannel shirts that are just the world-class flannel shirts. We both write. Maureen Dowd's column on the op-ed page of the New York Times is devoted to reminiscing about the 70s. Right. And there was a time I could take three of them and take a nap. That's all the only point. So. <laughs> but this speed vision, oh, this is a great deal. I mean, you know about this. If you like cars, boats, planes, motorcycles, and you're into NASCAR races and those kinds of things, you can call your local cable company and they'll put it on there. Uh, yeah, we got the car running real good. We're going to put some new tires on it about five laps. So we won't thank the good wrench people done a good job for it. It's called 188 22 speed. And uh, the people here in uh, in uh, Portland, Maine, who are sponsoring our, our trip, I, I lost that whole list. But I just found it. Brown Pontiac, the people from Dunkin' Donuts, the H.P. Hood folks, Charles now with the national news and world events and all that. Stuff live from Portland, Maine. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, I man. One of the top stories of the morning and through the morning. Oh, has that's been a good one. Been the case of this convicted <laughs> murderer, Michael, who became a rallying point for death penalty opponents, and he has been executed in the state of Missouri. Alan Bannister, no longer with us. He died shortly after one o'clock this morning, Eastern, in Potosi, Missouri, the penitentiary. Oh, oh darn. After receiving an injection of lethal chemicals, his last words 
a complaint. Why? That, that wasn't it. <laughs> wasn't it. So long, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that the state of Missouri was committing, as he put it, premeditated a murder as possible. Mr. Bannister was sentenced to die 14 years ago for a contract killing that he claimed was an accident. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors say he received about $5,000 to kill a guy who was living with another man's wife. Bannister claimed right up till the end the gun went off accidentally during a scuffle. Hey, uh, Barnacle, are you following hey. this uh, nanny trial? And Maybe the electric chair went off accidentally. <laughs> In Cambridge? Uh, banger TV here, right? Can't, maybe I should just ask, can you? And why would you want to? <laughs> why would you want to see Don and Penny? But, but it's one of these classic deals where Don's the old guy doing the news. Yeah. Right? And he's got to be my age. No, I mean, he's, he's older than I am. Yeah. He's doing the news, and it's not working out. You know, they've slipped to number two or three, right? So they bring in Penny. And Penny looks like she's just graduated from the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, <laughs> which is fine, which is a fine school. Very enthusiastic. You're very enthusiastic. Yeah. And they're alternating stories, you know, and you can sense the animosity that's, you know, that's palpable there between these two people. He wants to set her chair on fire. Greater than, th <laughs> greater than that that existed between Dan Rather and Connie Chung. Oh, when uh, y'all remember the uh, the infamous curbside shooting photograph from the Vietnam War, you know, where the guy was standing with a. That's what we had going on in the uh, CBS Evening News, but. Uh, so we left that, uh, but I, I really wish we'd have had more time to explore that. Explore that, yeah. and it would have been, it would have been great if we could have exacerbated. I that. guess we right. could go back there, couldn't we? Oh we, sure. We could just get on the plane and go back there tomorrow, <laughs> couldn't we? Yeah. This afternoon, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's 18 minutes after the hour uh, here in the Irish Morning Program. We're talking with Mike Barnacle from the Boston Globe. Mr. Barnacle also as a uh, regional editor for the News Hour with Jim Lair and. Uh, Occasionally, we'll appear on friends of his radio and television program, which is why we have him here this morning. Although he does probably have a paid, you have some kind of paid speech up here you're doing? That's what it is, isn't it? No, I came up to go to the, the Coster Egg Factory to take a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's. Oh, these are regional references. That's a regional reference that I just don't get. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yoke. Is it something that I. <laughs> Oh man. A, oh man! Oh, you're never going no, with really, us again. Really, I know it's really. <laughs> Just suspend yourself. Is that something we should know about? No. no. Okay. So Barnacle uh, denied that he went to the, see the Rolling Stones at Foxborough, but we'll talk to him about the Stones, about Rick Pitino and the Boston Celtics, and about how the Patriots got whooped up on by our New York Jets. <laughs> <laughs> Our New York Jets this week. <laughs> All that coming up, 19 after the hour. Just because I ask a friend about her. Just because I spoke her name somewhere. Point one, the peak. WPEK. Are you confident in your tires? Can they take that hot hole you're about to hit? Do they have enough traction for this weather? Will they last as long as you expect them to, as long as you need them to? Well, if you have Uniroyal tires from Welburn Tire Service, you can be confident your answer will be yes. Because Uniroyal tires from Welburn Tire Service are built with DuraShield construction. And now... Thomas in the morning, 2020 sports with Mark Breen. Go, baby. Hello. Testing. Hello, I man. What's the problem here? A cart that didn't fire. Oh darn. But it's good to be with you. Yeah. <laughs> this is Mike Breen with sports reporting from Astoria, Queens, and wishing I was in the most beautiful city in the world right now. Oh, Portland, Maine. Oh, that's just terrible. World Series Game 3 last night from Cleveland. A heartbreaking loss for the Cleveland Indians. Leading 7-3, they lose 14-11 to the Florida Marlins. Indians manager Mike Hart... 
Indians manager Mike Hargrove tried to laugh off the devastating defeat. <laughs> Obviously, the laughter just to cover for his sorrow is his team now trailing two games to one. Six hours in the game. It took four hours and 12 minutes. Very cold in Cleveland. Temperatures reached 36 degrees below zero. The highlight of the game, of course, was Jim Gray's interview with Jim Leyland's mom. <laughs> who, uh, well, did you see that? Yes. A former I Man girlfriend, from what I recall. 85 years old. Some poor sweet thing sitting there in the stands without a clue. <laughs> but... And why, here's what I didn't understand, is why we have mom, who's 85, sitting there, and the wind chill was, uh, I heard that little obnoxious little shrimp, Costas, who is not a great baseball announcer, by the hello, uh, comment that it was 29 degrees wind chill. Why do we have mom, who's 85, out there, wrapped up like an Eskimo? <laughs> she stayed the whole game, too. Yeah. yeah. Well past midnight Eastern time. Yeah, trying to get rid of her, I don't know. Terrible. No, I like don't. Well, it was horrible, though. Beats eating really? dog food at home, probably. Maybe it does. Reminded us of you sitting out there at the U.S. Open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Controversial story regarding a woman's volleyball coach in Utah. Uh -oh. The woman is a high school coach for 18 years. Her volleyball team, one of the most successful in the state. But she's now been fired. The reason, she divorced her husband and has moved in with another woman. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. <laughs> no, no, not well, all right. Adding new meaning to the volleyball term of spiking. <laughs> now, while many support the school decision to ditch the dyke, there are other people. <laughs> no, no. The woman has received support from an unlikely source, uh -oh. President Bill Clinton, who said he will meet with the coach and her female lover later today. The three of us are just going to spend the day playing games and having fun with each other, and then we're going to go to a party tonight. <laughs> Very nice to the president. <laughs> called, them, called them both in on the carpet, did he? <laughs> no, 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 not so bad enough. Just shut up. Just go ahead, Mike. And finally, a nice story regarding the competitive nature of New Jersey Nets forward David Benoit. Benoit played against the Utah Jazz the other day no. in a preseason game. The team he played for a few years back, and a team he still has some buddies on. But Benoit said, quote, I have friends over there, but I have a job to do. If your mother's out there and you're playing for the big one, you will beat your mother up. Nice competitive fire from the veteran forward. And finally, Tiger Woods named PGA Player of the Year yesterday. This week, he defends his title in the Las Vegas Invitational. Tiger talked about being the defending champ. You are a defending champion for 51 weeks. And once the week starts, once you get here, then it's up for grabs. You know, once you register, then you're no longer defending champion. Uh, anyone in the field can win. Boom. I hate Tiger Woods. <laughs> God, what an obnoxious... Ugh. And of Just course, shut up and play golf. We wish him uh, all the luck in the world. And how hard is golf? I proved that. Well, it's not difficult yeah, at know. all. Absolutely it's not. It's not difficult. No. So. And that's sports. I'm Mike Breen. All right, here now on the... <laughs> I Miss the Morning uh, radio program, live from... Uh, Portland, Maine, coming to you from the Merrill Auditorium on Hot Talk 970 WZA, and of course for simulcast every morning on MSNBC, from Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and we'll be having discussions with some of the MSNBC executives, like that fool, uh, Andrew Lack, of why they're not rolling this out uh, 6 to 9 Pacific Time. Right. Doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me, but... It's not. Was the junk they're having on uh, well, that time of the morning out there is not uh, apparently getting it done. Anyway, here now on the I'm This Morning program, singing the blues. Blind Mississippi, white boy, pig feet, Dupree. Morning, feet. Morning, boy. Good to be here in Portland. National Semiconductor. Thought I'd throw out a local reference. They've been working so well up to now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got me a, a new blues tune for you. That would be why you're here. Yes, sir. Because you know who got the blues a whole lot these days? No. That Bubba. Oh, oh. really? That Bubba got, got a bad case of the blues. He, Bubba got them. Bubba made a boo-boo blues. <laughs> Let me hear this. Goes something like this here. 
What are you doing? My foot fell asleep. Okay. <laughs> was listening to Barnacle. <laughs> 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 well, it seems to me that always Some committee holding a hearing on Capitol Hill Some in-depth investigation Going down around the administration of our President Bill yeah. But it never fails, Slick Willie Come up with some lame excuse now I got them campaign finance bribery, Democratic Party charity, no controlling legal authority, but I think Bubba made a boo-boo blue. <laughs> well. Oh. Voice we heard about Whitewater, that shady little real estate deal. Yeah. Then Paula Jones in that hotel room, where he allegedly tried to copy himself a little feel. <laughs> And now erasing the sound on them videos The latest thing he been accused And they're facing perilous public persecution For criminal campaign contributions Patented political prostitution <laughs> Bubba got himself Them big ass boo boo blue <laughs> uh -huh. Will Mr. Clinton cop a plea And say mistakes was made <laughs> Be as persuasive as he can be, just like when he's trying to get laid. <laughs> now, Mr. Freddie Thompson and Mr. Henry Hyde is making their big time goal line partisan push. Can't hear what the president said to Mr. Wang, so they gotta read his lips like Mr. Bush. <laughs> but while they watch your mouth and words, will any of them be the truth? I got them Chinese money laundry, COD for the DNC, one from column A, two from column B, <laughs> delivery from Charlie Tree, better hold that MSG, cause Bubba made a big ass boo boo blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Mississippi White Boy Pig Feast Dupree, live from Portland, Maine, here on the I'm Some Morning Program. We're at the Merrill Auditorium on Hot Talk 970 WZAN. What's the name of this? Uh, you, you got me doing what you want. Hey. Right. Hey. Baby, what you want to let go? No, baby, what you want me to do? Okay. 59-1211. Any hot dogs. I've eaten any. Uh, the only thing I've had to eat on this uh, trip are uh, a couple of enchiladas, some ch some ch chips. You didn't play golf. golf. You didn't play golf. No. Yesterday. No golf is I'm, that's in my past that's now. Over. Yeah. Uh, I do want to take uh, an opportunity to thank Bob Gold, the vice president, general manager at WZAN. He's done a great job. Bill uh, Whitten, the sales manager, also from ZAN, another great job. Beautiful. Uh, and the people here at the uh, Merrill Auditorium have been great. Frank Latore. The chief engineer for this whole deal, uh, Chuck Bullet, has done a fabulous job. And I couldn't get tickets. You know? I just couldn't get in. The Lloyd Grove. I was on the road. I was on my way to Portland. The Lloyd Grove of the Boston Globe. Oh. Alan, Alex Beam, is that his name? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of an it's kind of a inside the Beltway joke. Must be. Yeah. He, uh, that slug went, so he's got a column in the paper about this morning that's actually sort of amusing. So I have not read the paper yet. I'll be done. So. I came up here just in anticipation of Rob doing the audience thing, based upon his success yesterday. <laughs> you know, it's unfortunate, you know, because if we were a few miles north or west of Portland, you could actually find people who are their own cousins up here. <laughs> <laughs> I have, you, uh, have you selected anyone to appear on the program? Well, I, I have a, a potential pair of gentlemen, yes. Get them up here. <laughs> Pete and Gibb, come on down! <laughs> You have two people? Oh, man, how great is this? Look at them. Oh. Oh, two guys coming down in hunting uniform. Oh, this is great. Oh. They got a copy of Catcher in the Rye they want you to sign for them. 
They're making duck sounds as they approach. How, uh, how did they come to our attention? Look at them. Oh. They're oh. like a walking yield sign. <laughs> how are you guys? Fine, Good. thank Fine. you. Fine. And you are on the left here? I am Gib. And? Pete. <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> you know, we all got together last night and we came up with this idea and no one fell, came along with us. Yeah. We didn't mean to do this. Yeah, <laughs> really. We were just hunting, you know? I'll bet you were. <laughs> yes, sir. We were just hunting. Why? Uh, okay, why are you wearing these outfits here? I mean... Because we... we Go ahead. We were out hunting and, you know, driving through town. We saw this long line outside there, yeah, and we just, you know, got into it and sucked right in, you know. And then all of a sudden, this fine gentleman here said, hey, would you like to come up front and say hey? So we're saying hey. Well. There you go. Are those your clothes or are you breaking them in for someone? <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're mine. What, uh, what do you guys do, really? Well, we work together, too. We yeah. uh, build stuff. Yeah. It's supposed to be side in the house right now. Yeah, we're, we're hunting vinyl today. <laughs> so you're supposed to be putting side in on the house. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> but you're here. How unusual yeah. a contractor that doesn't show up to the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a, uh, as a memento of your appearance on a program, you're going to win a very fine pocket watch. <laughs> But you two can uh, uh, fight. Where? Just, I just sort of curious. There's no real reason I want to know. But wh 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 where are your guns now? <laughs> <laughs> I had to check them in at, at the door. Yeah, check them at the door. They wouldn't let us bring them in. So uh, fire, it's a firearm ordinance around here. Oh yeah. Well, that would be that'd be great. So. And, a, and a good one. <laughs> oh well, yeah. you know. Listen, uh, you do you do vinyl siding for a living? Well, we do everything for a living, but we're doing that. Could you yeah. give me an estimate on his face? <laughs> How about covering your head? <laughs> well, it was, it was, what's that, what, you guys' names again or what? Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I just... <laughs> Well, thanks both of you for coming, and uh, maybe you should go to work now. So. <laughs> thanks very much. Give him a nice hand. Thank you. Good, uh, Pete. <laughs> they were better, yes. Okay. Yeah. So we'll... scary though. Yeah. Well, that was certainly the intent. Yeah. So. They're up there with other people who have on the same sort. It's just like a little militia, like a... <laughs> the main militia. It, right. It's like the Portland version of the Klan. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what you wear when you hunt vinyl. It's <laughs> 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 a 17 to lay hour now. We're talking with Tom Brokaw, who is the managing editor and the anchor of the NBC Nightly News. So what's coming up tonight? Oh, with, the, with the sex wars. Um... <laughs> I don't remember right offhand. Jesus, God, this is your series. You're, you're going on about it last night. You're promoting it. I'm trying to help you. No, uh, I know. <laughs> tonight, uh, tonight we're, one of the big stories that we're doing tonight, and I think this will, will be of much more interest to you. We're doing a story tonight on Alzheimer's, Don, so I'll be counting on you to be in the audience tonight. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. How do you decide uh, when you're doing the nightly news which MSNBC program you're going to promote? You know, maybe if it would ever come up that you would be promoting, say, our program, on, which is, continues to be the most successful entity on. Yeah, I think that probably that would require another Justice Department intervention. I mean. <laughs> Coming up in 10 minutes to the hour, and we're in Portland, Maine, the Merrill Auditorium, Hot Tide 970, WZAN. Well, a very enthusiastic uh, group of folks, Rob out in the audience looking for, uh, uh, for well, who knows? Some food. Man, he found these two uh, folks right off the set of Deliverance, didn't exactly. he? I, and I thought Barnacle said you'd have to go seven miles from here to find people who were their own cousins, but I guess... About 20 minutes from Apparently now. Apparently not. 
Anyway, and uh, Mike Barnacle in Boston Globe is here, and uh, we, we were, we were, we were going to talk about the Rolling Stones, I guess not a lot, but yeah. did you read Maureen Dowd? You haven't read the papers, you said. I have not read the papers. Maybe we'll turn Mike's m- mic on. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I have um, not read the paper. Yeah, so, well, it's a big I'm 70s... I'm looking forward to reading the paper. Big 70s redux yeah. thing this morning about... Um, nostalgia deal. Yeah, the big nostalgia deal from Maureen Dowd. Well, you're still on. <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. You're bigger than ever. That's another good point. So. Yeah. Uh, but you had no interest in the Stones thing. They sold out Foxborough, right? They, uh, they sold out Foxborough. I mean, the Stones, they, they, their last great song was issued, released, you know, probably in uh, March of 71, Brown Sugar. That's yeah. been it for them. I mean, it's over for them. But clearly, I mean, they're capitalizing on... Uh, no, no, wait, wait a minute. How would you know that Brown Sugar was released in March of 1971? I can remember it. I, I have a specific thing in mind. Aren't you find that? Aren't you that's concerned that he knows that? That, that is starting. It's probably that's whole disturbing that you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have a, I have a specific memory in mind. He was sleeping with Shirley Chisholm or something. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Mike? Something like that. Shirley well, Chisholm. Well, yeah, and you were in the next room with Charlie Rangel. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley Chisholm. Oh God. Shirley Chisholm lives now in Buffalo, New York. She does. Yeah, and she's married to the county supervisor from Buffalo. Well, that's that's looking better than ever, too. Right? <laughs> Celebrity sex talk will this continue is, after these messages. This is like being on Jeopardy. So, uh, Rick Pitino, the boss. Primus, good morning, Fred. Why did they, uh, everybody expect Parcel to win when he took over the team, and they don't expect a little geek of Rick Pitino to win any games? Well, my brother, that's a good point. Here's the, have Barnacle explain that. Explain that, Barnacle. Well, can we get the instant Berlitz on the question? I mean... <laughs> Well, I, I mean, everybody expected Parcells to immediately transform the Jets with the players he had. No one's expecting that of Mr. Patino with the players he has. And after all, they are, they were good enough to be drafted into the National Basketball exactly. Association. So, well, I mean, uh, uh, the, first of all, why aren't you holding Patino's feet to the fire? Isn't that kind of what you're saying, Fred? Yeah, well, yeah. But why is he sucking up time? No, I'd like to hold your face to the fire. Why are you? <laughs> it already has been. <laughs> oh, really? We're going to attack my brother, are we, Charles? Oh, no, absolutely not, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Fred, you know, a lot of people called me and tried to get tickets to that show up there in Portland. They did. Yeah, but I don't have any. I, I got uh, people a couple of tickets, but you know when I said I couldn't get tickets to that? Yeah. I said, well, I can get you tickets to Rob's show, because there's always a lot available <laughs> there. Oh, man. <laughs> well... As Barnacle called you... you could be the only one in the audience. <laughs> As Barnacle called you uh, recently with any, any uh, Barnacle jokes... Thank God, no. <laughs> he should tell those awful jokes right now. Why, and no. then you would see why I, I don't take his calls anymore. Do you have one joke that you've called Fred with? That you, Barnacle calls my brother and tries to get my brother to tell the jokes. That, do you have one joke that you've told Fred... No, what irritates Fred is I call him on the 800 line at his expense. Yeah. <laughs> That's what really irritates him. And I don't order anything. The joke is that he always takes the call. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hang on a few minutes, Fred? Yeah, I, I ain't doing nothing. Just okay. smoking and drinking coffee. <laughs> it's four minutes now until the hour, and we'll talk more with uh, Fred Imus, and maybe Barnacle will hang out just a little bit. Uh, all that coming up live from Portland, Maine. It's five minutes past the hour, and we are in Portland, Maine at the Merrill Auditorium. On Hot Talk 970 WZAN. With uh, Mike Barnacle from the Boston Globe and uh, Fred Imus live on the phone from Santa Fe, New Mexico. And Charles McCord has the um, national news, and we'll get to that. And then uh, Senator Edward Kennedy will be joining us. Remember? Y'all are looking forward to that, aren't you? (laughs) Aren't you? Then we'll be talking with Abby Anderson. Abby is a songwriting astrologer who Rob has located out in the audience. We'll not be talking with Abby right now. Abby can relax for a moment. (laughs) (laughs) Abby just uh, went down there, got down in front of the stage there. Something (laughs) Something happened. And we'll be talking with John Santera. He is a 18-year-old falconer, but does not have his bird with him. Even though he does have his dead Whoa. bird. Yeah. It doesn't leap to mind, you know, to bring a bird to a radio show. <laughs> Probably not. And Joe... Uh, Grabars. Grabars. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's a high school freshman, yeah. and he's here. What's he doing here? School's in session. I, I knew we're going to find that out. He's 14 years old, and uh, Rob he already went further in high school than I did. <laughs> Pardon me? If he's a freshman, he already went further than I did. Well, <laughs> I don't think you had to tell us that, friend. <laughs> but you'd have well. never guessed that, would you, I man? <laughs> you must guess that, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Charles has the national news. Now, Fred. Yeah. Um, you and Mr. Barnacle feel uh, free if you have any observations to make about any of the stories that uh, Charles will be sharing with us. Uh, we, we, we would love to have either either of your comments. Sure. Uh, I have an observation. Okay. What about Rob leaving the table and coming back with a 14-year-old high school freshman? <laughs> <laughs> That's the story there. That is a pretty good point. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> And what did happen to that guy's bird when you were out there? And how many bars did you have to drag Larry out of last night? I don't think we need to get on Larry. Larry, Larry's been behaving himself very, uh, quite well, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He's comported himself so, beautifully. Never yeah. saw him when we were in Boston. <laughs> well, he was busy. He, 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 and, he and Barnacle and Doris Kearns Goodwin were... Which, uh, can you imagine three more unlikely people together no. than Larry Kenny, Mike Barnacle, and Doris Kearns Goodman? <laughs> but they were all drunk for three days, and, <laughs> along with Robin Brown from the Four Seasons Hotel, <laughs> all drunk someplace there. In the kitchen. We were eating yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. Anyway, here's Chuck of the News. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, I man. President Clinton out attending another campaign fundraiser last night, raising money for funds which uh, help Democratic candidates run for the United States Senate. The president at one point insisting, I am no lame duck. Let the other side continue to follow the politics of personal destruction. Let us... Boy, the, yeah. your, your patience level, no tolerance. No, no. <clears throat> The I miss in the morning, zero tolerance uh, policy. Well, I mean, uh, idiotic to, to have these fundraisers now, idiotic to attend them, and idiotic to give money to these people when, uh, you know, he's not going to be president much longer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's likely that he'll finish his term. Don't you think, Barnacle, he'll make, he'll make it through without going to jail, probably? Oh, I think he will, yes. Yeah, so might want to just leave Mike's mic on. Yeah. I talk to him at any time. <laughs> Why? And, uh, hey, Fred, change hands. And Al Gore. <laughs> uh, do I, I don't know, but it was a change hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's a really unfortunate remark. Well, this anyway. is the 10 o'clock hour. <laughs> uh, and who's going to give money to, you know, Al Gore is not going to be president, you know. It's uh, 13 after the hour. Well, what else going on? That's Charles? unfortunate. No. Um, <laughs> to a story that um, Mike Green was uh, reporting earlier, a high school volleyball coach who led her team to four Utah State titles in 18 years, fired for divorcing her husband, moving in with her lesbian lover. And yesterday, Wendy Weaver, the 40-year-old mother of two, filed a federal lawsuit against the Nebo School District, Salt Lake City. Ms. Weaver upset about losing her coaching job and being told... She me. I don't want anyone to suffer what I have experienced. Yeah. Al, well, how does that, I just wonder what the... Al Gore is going to go see her tonight to watch Ellen together. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what, uh, what, how does that... Uh, if you're 40 years old, mm -hmm. you have uh, a couple of kids. Right. And uh, do, do you just wake up one morning and think, you know... Or is this something that has been weighing on you for <clears throat> perhaps all your life? Well, what happened to you? <laughs> Why do they fire somebody with, with what potentially would be, make a pretty darn good movie? <laughs> well, by the way, thanks for mentioning that, Fred. Now, this is odd. A, a, apparently a song or two written by you, right, Fred? Yeah. And sung by Larry Kenny? No, it's uh, sung by some people in Cleveland. Uh-oh. So, so I've been cut out of this movie, Fred? You've been cut out of this movie, yes, because there, you've been cut out because you could never stay in tune through the whole song. The yes, same thing happened with Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh... Well, we don't have any problem with Larry singing, Larry, do we, Charles? No, Larry, Larry does a great job. What, and this... So these songs my brother wrote, how many songs are there, Fred? There's a couple songs in it. Two songs. It's the movie's Alien Avengers 2. Okay. 
on a movie channel, I think, 9 o'clock Saturday night. You could tell it's not on PBS from the title. <laughs> Alien Avengers 2. Well, you, aren't, you are. aren't these, are these country songs, Fred? Yes, they are. It's, it's, it's about these aliens that come back to uh, Earth yeah. as the country and western people. <laughs> singing your songs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. Well, they, they use them in a barroom scene, you know? There's dialogue over them. Right. And so uh, they're not up front, but you can hear them, you know? Oh, in other words, this is not like the old Elvis Presley movies. No. Or something where, the, where you're... Oh, this is... The, you're in, the in other words, you have sound... In, in other words, your songs are like the soundtrack. Yes. Part of the soundtrack. Well, and that's, a, that's the way they normally use uh, no, no. songs no, no, in no, movies. No, 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 wait, no, no. No, no. You mean... So, so you put me in the humiliating position of promoting, thinking that your songs are featured in this movie, when in fact they'll be... There'll be like two guys in a bar talking. Yeah. And there's music playing, and the music playing underneath the dialogue, and maybe the fight and stuff, yeah. and the sirens is one of your songs. To and it's not even me singing it. And it's not even Larry singing it. <laughs> and it's to, pr to provide ambiance. What are the names of the songs? How can I miss you if you won't go away? That's one of them. <laughs> what are they called, Fred? One of them's called uh, Warden Let Me Leave Here a Star. <laughs> Warden, let me leave here a star. This is the song you wrote. Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd have cut that one. He, what, wrote, uh, he wrote that from Marv. What? what uh, I, don't, I don't remember what they're about. They've been, they're, the songs are 20 years old, and I haven't heard them in years. You wrote a song called Warden, Let Me Leave Here a Star, <laughs> and you don't know what it's about. Well, uh, it's about a guy in prison, you know, and, and stuff. But I, I don't rem I haven't heard the song. Well, they know the tip off there would be Warden. <laughs> I would figure it out. It would be about a guy in prison, as opposed to say a Denny's. <laughs> I mean, okay, he's in prison. I, I, I don't remember a lot what the song is about because I haven't heard you it. You wrote either. it. <laughs> well, let's talk about what you may have remembered in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good point. <laughs> hey, Warden, let me leave here a star. Yeah. Is that a guy about he's going to get out of prison? No, they're gonna they're gonna juice him. Oh, he's gonna be executed. Yeah. And he what he, he and he wants to do what before they execute him? He wants to get up and sing Hank's songs for the boys. Well, then you do know what it's about. Well, yeah, but I don't remember all what it's about. Okay, so we have a guy who's in prison. Guy, guy whacked his wife. He whacked his wife. Yeah. I don't know where that That's inspiration a, came sounds from. Like, sounds like it's autobiographical, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Although, let me just say this, Fred. Your wife was a fine woman. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, this is a little family joke. <laughs> oh, God. Goodness. Uh, yeah. We just all loved her. Oh, I got to go now. <laughs> she was just great. Bridge is uh, back on. I got to go. Fred, I love you. I'll love call you. you later. All right. I'm going back to New York, so I'll call you tonight. Well, you know, that makes sense. If the show's over and there's no other shows up there, why wouldn't you go back to New York? <laughs> it's 19 after the hour here on the I Miss in the Morning program. Uh, you know I love you, honey child. I miss in the morning. The Indians, I don't remember what the score was, but trust me that the Marlins won the game. A game that took four hours and 12 minutes to complete. It would have taken longer, but the game ended. <laughs> Manager Jim Leland said what they've tried to do is say, hey, let's not look beyond tomorrow. Let's not think about the ring. I think what we tried to do is say, hey, don't, let's not look beyond tomorrow. Let's not, let's not think about the ring. Leland right on top of things as his Marlins now lead the series two games to one. They'll play again tonight, God willing. Really nice of Jim Leland to have his 85-year-old mother sitting there wrapped up in a, in a, uh, in a cheap shawl in, uh, with a wind chill of 29 degrees there at Jacobs Field. What was that all about? <laughs> and she stayed for the entire four hours and 12 minutes. Mm. Really past midnight, this poor old woman sitting out there, and I guess she has some difficulty, God bless her, yeah. in 
seeing or understanding what's happening. <laughs> I thought it was at the Stones concert. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bobby Bonilla, on a positive note, made two key errors and nearly caused his team to lose the game. Yeah. Bonilla's battling a hamstring injury. He's listed as day-to-day, -day, but then again, aren't we all? <laughs> More on the Wendy Weaver story, that high school volleyball coach, the very famous high school volleyball coach from Utah, fired because she left her husband to pursue other interests. <laughs> As we mentioned, Weaver and her new female lover have received the support of President Bill Clinton, who showed his support this morning at a press conference by making a stunning announcement. I am a homosexual. 